But this is how it goes and breaks down. So we saw for pretty much most of the period, up until the mid-2000s, Commonwealth immigration uh, was by far the highest source of immigration quite consistently. But um, beginning in the 2000s and then by the mid-2000s, especially after 2004 when the accession countries, which were the Eastern European countries, which were let in, suddenly the composition of the immigration skews much more heavily towards Europe. And the impression we get, although we don't have the final data, is that this trend continues further upwards in the last few years as well. So immigration has changed from a primarily Commonwealth situation to one where it's really EU immigrants are the primary source of immigration into the UK. So the question is, are voters going and responding to this? Do the changes in when they're concerned about immigration go and track the actual immigration patterns? And actually, it looks pretty close. So this is the most important issue facing the country trends for immigration in Ipsos Mori. And we see there was a spike in the 70s um, around the time of some concerns about immigration and uh, Enoch Powell and the rest of that. But then it dropped off a lot until the 2000s when there was a big spike in immigration and voters responded to it, went down a bit in the recession, and then it's gone up again and is increasing at the moment. So just to put these two side by side, what we see is that they are actually pretty closely tracking each other and actually, so eyeballing it, I would say that the EU line is probably the one that's tracking most closely with the overall concern about immigration. There does seem to be a tie there in terms of what voters are thinking about and what the reality on the ground is. So the other way to look at this is actually at the individual level of our attitudes towards immigration and attitudes towards the EU. Are these um, issues more correlated in voters' minds now? And there's some reason to think that this actually might not change necessarily over time, because if you think about it, wanting to leave a sort of multinational group made up of foreigners and uh, open trade might just be something that taps into general authoritarian attitudes or uh, anti-foreigner attitudes. So it's not necessarily the case that we'd expect to change here. In fact, we actually do see quite a significant change. Um, this is the difference in the rate of EU approval between the people who said immigration is the most important issue facing the country and people who said something else was the most important issue. So there's already a relationship even back in 2004 here, but a few years into the accession countries where the EU's really become the biggest source of immigrants, we see quite a strong rise in the strength of this relationship. And interestingly, we see another rise in 2013. And 2013 is quite relevant here because the United Kingdom Independence Party, which is a radical right party in the UK, really took off in their vote share around this time. So we don't necessarily know which way the causation goes here. It's possible that as UKIP went and uh, raised the salience of EU and immigration, tying them together, that voters went and responded to that and started believing those attitudes should be correlated. Or it's possible that because these attitudes became more correlated, that gave the space for UKIP to rise in response to that by creating a larger base of voters to draw on. So, as I said before, it's not necessarily the case that we expect change in this, but we actually do see it. So this is EU referendum voting in 1975, when there was another EU referendum, and 2015, according to whether people think there are too many immigrants or not. And what we see in 2015 is this very strong relationship, which I just showed on the previous slide, with over half of people who think there are too many immigrants want to leave the EU, but uh, only around 11% of people who don't think there are too many immigrants want to leave the EU. I mean, essentially, these have become very much a single scale, a single attitude in Britain. But in 1975, this wasn't the case at all. You actually had, among people who think there are too many immigrants, a lower rate of wanting to leave the EU than people who think there aren't too many immigrants. And what this tells us is that it's very much a contingent fact that these two attitudes have become very connected, that these two policy areas are connected, and voters are responding to the facts on the ground, which is that immigration and the EU have become more tied together. It's not just a general tapping into one latent trade. So the other thing we see is that immigration attitudes have actually polarized the prints. This is the proportion of people, we only have a few cases here, who say that too many immigrants have been let into the country. And it's actually declining, which is quite funny if you remember the first slide, which say that actually over this time period, the concern about immigration has actually been rapidly increasing. So what we have is an expanding group of people who don't think immigration is an issue at all, and an expanding group who think it's the most important issue. So this has become a more polarized issue in the minds of voters. 
And it's also become more polarizing in terms of partisanship. So back in the 1960s, essentially there was no difference in the proportion of people who thought there were too many immigrants between the parties. This then expanded in the 70s, where the conservatives became more associated with anti-immigration policy. And this continued on until about 2015, when there's still that gap between Labour and the Conservatives, but you seem to get a sorting effect into UK, where the people from Labour and the Conservatives who had anti-immigration preferences would go towards UKIP, and possibly people from other parties ended up here. So you have a much more divided partisan landscape around this issue now. And we could see this as well, so we used the British Election Study panel data to track voters, voters in 2010 who supported Labour, and looking at where they ended up in 2015. And what we find is that voters in 2015 who started as Labour in 2010 are slightly less working class, a lot less angry about immigration, and a lot less angry about the EU compared to those Labour voters who switched to UKIP. So it really is both the EU and UKIP, which are the EU and immigration, which are driving this shift towards UKIP. So, as I said before, the picture here is that immigration used to not be relevant in the 60s. It became significant in the 70s, and now it's really become one of the defining issues of the partisan landscape in 2015. And the total effect on immigration has increased substantially, one, because there's more choices presented to voters in terms of UK potentially representing that view, and also because there's increasing demand for representation that wasn't able to be addressed by the major parties because they're committed to Europe, even though Europe has become a larger source of immigrants. So what we know is that the public seems to relatively accurately perceive the levels of immigration, or at least the changes in it, because their concern about it closely tracks actual immigration. They've also gone and connected their views up about the EU and immigration quite accurately too. That's link increased as the proportion of EU migrants increased. And the immigration attitude is also increasingly polarized, first of all in terms of what people think, and also in terms of how they attach it to parties. And this has had really quite substantial implications in how the EU referendum is going to work. Uh, there's no chance that <coughs> EU voting won't be about immigration at this point. And it's also facilitated political representation with UKIP, which have provided an outlet for views that previously were not on the table politically. Thank you.